Hello, and welcome to Excel 2016. There's a lot to be said about the tools available inside of Excel that allow us to analyze mass sets of data. For example, we're looking at fiscal years 2013 and 2014 sales data for this creamery company. And there's a lot of questions that we can ask. For example, how much did we sell in fiscal year 2013? How much did we sell in the North region versus the Central or the West? How much did Bishop sell compared to Pullen? All these questions and more are inside the data set. But the way in which we answer these questions can be tedious, overwhelming even, depending on how we come at this with the tools we already have available. Even more so when the questions get even more complex. How much did we sell in frozen yogurt in March of 2014? How much more did we sell in the central region in 2013 than we did in 2014? How are we doing year over year in quarter three sales? All these questions and more can be answered if we know where to look. We need some way of taking this data and pivoting it to build around a central question. So this is where pivot tables come into effect. Pivot tables are these fantastic tools that allow us to essentially take all of this data, pour it into a blender, and distill it down into just the core data elements that we need to answer specific questions. So let's build one out and see what that looks like. To navigate to the pivot table tools, we're gonna to need to jump into the insert tab. Inside the insert tab, we've already talked about tables, but we haven't talked about these two tools. Now, recommended pivot tables are simply going to analyze the data that we already have and try to guess how we might pivot this data. Instead of going through that process, we're gonna simply just build it for ourselves. Ensure your cursor is somewhere inside the data set and find the pivot table button and give it a click. Instantly, all of the data is highlighted, once again, because this is a well-formed list. Notice that it says select a table or range, and it's already filled all that out for us. All we have to answer is where do we want to put it? In a new worksheet or an existing worksheet? In most cases, you're going to want to put this pivot table and any pivot table into a new worksheet so you have the maximum amount of space to work with. Once you've verified all this data, go ahead and click OK. Oh no, and we've lost all of our data. It's gone. Is it gone? Not particularly. In fact, it's important to note that when we're working with pivot tables, to always be aware of what sheet you're currently in. When we created this pivot table, it dropped us into a new worksheet, just like we asked. For posterity's sake, we're going to rename this sheet to Ice Cream Pivot, just so we don't get lost. Now, this is where we lose people almost immediately because this screen is unlike any other view inside of Microsoft Office. There is no screen quite like this view, and this is why it's so scary. But don't worry. On the right-hand side, we've got pivot table fields. Each of these checkboxes, month, year, type, salesperson, are representative of columns from the worksheet we were just in. Month, year, type, salesperson, and so on. However, these aren't just names. These are representational of the data inside those columns. So month isn't just month. Month enumerates all of the month values in the entire column. So it's important to keep that in mind as we go along. Underneath these fields, we have the field quadrants, filters, columns, rows, and values. We need at least two of these in order to build a table. One of those must be the values, and the other must be either a row or column. Now, let's go ahead and dial back to the original question here. How much did we sell in fiscal year 2013? If we were going to build a table that answered the question of how much we sold in any particular year, what would the rows of that table be? 
If you're saying that each individual row would represent a year, I'd agree with you. So let's find the field that contains the year values. Any guesses which of these contains the year value? If you're ever not sure, of course, you can always dive back to the original data set, and we can see here that the year column contains all of our year references. So let's find that year field value, and yes, I know there are checkboxes here, but instead of using the checkbox, simply hover over the year value field until you get that four corner arrow. Once you've got that highlighted, simply click and hold and then drag into the field quadrant that you'd like to implement year in. Do we want the years to be the column values or the row values? In this case, we're gonna do rows. So I'm gonna bring it into the rows quadrant and release. And just like that, it's taken all of the unique values from the year column and it's distilled them into their own rows. Pretty cool. And just like that, we've already got the skeleton of our pivot table. All we're really missing is sales. We need to find out how much we sold in this year versus this year. So which of these field lists contained my sales data? Easy question, our sales field list did. So where are we gonna put our sales list? Are we going to also make it part of the rows? Are we filtering by it? Is it going to be a column based value? Or is it the values, the meat of our data table? In this case, sales is the substance, it's our meat. So we wanna make sure that that goes into the values field. Go ahead and click and drag sales down into the values quadrant and release. And just like that, we've answered the question of how much we sold in fiscal year 2013 versus 2014. It was that easy. Go ahead and take this opportunity to catch up. Once again, the way we created this pivot table was by placing our cursor anywhere inside the data set. From here, we navigated to the insert tab and selected pivot table. Once we verified that all the data was highlighted, we made sure that it was being put into a new worksheet and clicked OK. Once inside the new worksheet, we added the year value field to the rows quadrant, giving us our individual yearly rows. Once we had built the structure of that table, all we needed was the meat, the main substance of our table. That was our sales, so we clicked and dragged sales and added it to the values quadrant. Go ahead and take this opportunity to catch up and then come back. Welcome back. So congratulations, you've built your first pivot table. Was it that hard? No. And in fact, the general consensus is that pivot tables are one of the easiest to use tools inside of Microsoft Excel. They just have an incredibly steep learning curve. Now, let's get back to this topic at hand here. Fiscal years 2013 versus 2014. Something's bothering me about this, and hopefully it's bothering you too. What is it? The formatting is off. Where's my dollar signs? Despite the fact that my pivot table sales column did have dollar signs, the actual pivoted data does not. So we're gonna need to implement this ourselves. Now, having said that, I'm sure that you are well aware about how to implement number formatting. By right-clicking on a cell, you go to Format Cells, right? And then Currency. Sure, we all know how to do that. But in pivot tables, that's not quite how it works. While it does do exactly what you want it to do, there's a better way, there's a more efficient way. Instead of right-clicking on the cell and going to Format Cells, we're gonna leapfrog that and go into an option that's only available from the right-click menu inside of a pivot table the number format button. Go ahead and find number format and give it a click. This is gonna leapfrog you directly into the number format cells box. It looks the same, but it acts a little differently upon execution. Go ahead and select currency 
and click OK. Not only did it change the cell that we were currently in, but it changed all the other cells as well. This is something that's unique to pivot tables. By changing one cell using the number format option, it changes all of the cells in the same field. In this case, all of these numbers came from the sales quadrant. So by changing one, we changed all. Now that we've kind of fixed that up a little bit, let's see what other kind of questions we can ask. Let's say, for example, we'd like to ask the question, not just how well we're doing in each particular year, but how well we're doing in each region in each particular year. Now, where are we going to get our region sales data from? If you said the region column, you'd absolutely be right. So let's go ahead and find the region field and click and drag it to the columns quadrant. And release. Just like that, we're now answering an even more complex question. Not just how well did we do in 2013 versus 2014, although those answers are still here. We're now answering the question, how well did we do in each year, in each region? So now, just like that, I can answer the question, how well we did in the North region in 2014 versus 2013. Just like I can ask the question, how well did I do in the Central region in each particular year, and see that there's near a $100,000 difference. That's pretty substantial. Now, we added the region to the Columns quadrant, but what would have happened if I had added it to the rows quadrant instead? Can I do that? Can I have multiple values inside the same quadrant? The answer is yeah, you absolutely can. Go ahead and click and drag region into the rows quadrant and release. And check it out. Look how easy to read this is. We're now answering the question of how well in each year did we do in each region. While we still have our subtotals up at the top answering the question of how well we did in one particular year, we also answer the question in each region in each particular year. Now what would have happened if we had inverted this? What if we put year below region? Let's go ahead and do that. Click and drag year and bring it below the region quadrant and release. Instantly, we've changed the question that we're answering. We're no longer answering in each year, how well did we do in each region? We're now answering the question of in each region, how well did we do in each year? It's all about focus and perspective. You can see how easy it is to pivot this data simply by clicking and dragging. Go ahead and take this opportunity to catch up. Once again, we added region to the mix, first into columns, and then we tried it in the rows quadrant, both above and below the year value field. Go ahead and try that for yourself and see what feels best to you. What answers the question best? All right. So we've experimented with adding additional values to this pivot table field. Let's go ahead and keep piling on. Let's say I'd like to add salesperson to the mix. I'm going to click and drag salesperson into the columns field. And now I'm answering the question, not just how well we did in each region in each year, but how well each individual salesperson did in each region in each year. It's amazing how much detail we can pull out of this. So now I can see here that in 2013 in the North region, Watson put up $51,000, but in 2014 he put up $77,000. That's a pretty substantial jump. Consequently, I can also look at still just Bishop in the Central region, or the North, or the West. Now, I'm noticing here that there's a huge outlier. Bishop did all right in the central and north region, but did a massive number of sales in the west region. Let's say I'd like to see where all of that money came from. Now, how do I get all the information from just this? I just want to see all of the sales of Bishop in the west region for both years. To get that information, I'm going to simply double click on that cell or right click and select show details. Welcome to drill down reports. 
By double clicking on a single cell, you are going to field every single record that goes into that number. It's going to distill all of that information into a brand new worksheet formatted as a table. This table is now ready for export, either as a PDF, email attachment, or using the export table data button to SharePoint or Visio. How incredibly easy is that? This is bar none one of the most powerful tools available inside of Excel pivot tables. Once again, let's say I'd like to find all of the sales records of Watson in the North region in 2013. Simply find that cell and double click, and there you go. I now have every single sales record of Watson in the North region in 2013, all in one easy to read table. Pretty cool. Go ahead and try that for yourself. Build out a drill down report of information that you'd like to see more data on. All right. Hopefully you're starting to see now that pivot tables are an incredibly powerful tool when it comes to analyzing mass sets of data. Remember, we're answering all of these questions using data from this. That's pretty incredible, and it's insanely easy. Let's simplify things just a little bit here for just a moment. Uh, let's pull everything out. To remove a value field, simply uncheck the box. In this case, we're going to uncheck salesperson, region, and year. We should only have sales checked inside the values quadrant. What I'd like to do now is add month to the rows quadrant and year to the columns value. So now we're looking at trending information from 2013, January through December, and 2014, January through December. In previous lessons, we ran into this issue before, where when we're trying to view and visualize trending information, we find it difficult because numbers inherently are very difficult to process when there's a lot of them. So what tools do we have available that will allow us to analyze this data in real time without having to really squint at all the numbers? Well, charts. Charts are a great way of visualizing data, aren't they? To work with charts, we're gonna to need to dive into the Pivot Table Tools tab. So go ahead and find the Pivot Table Tools Analyze tab. This is where you're gonna have access to all these different options that allow you to control and analyze and work with pivot tables. In particular, the one I'd like to focus on, Pivot Charts. You see, regular charts don't play nicely with pivot tables because pivot tables are designed to expand and contract and add information and remove it all at the click and drag of a mouse. Charts weren't designed to handle that kind of moving dynamic data. So Microsoft had to go back to the drawing boards and build pivot charts, charts that are designed to work and ebb and flow with pivot table data. Go ahead and find the pivot charts button here in the analyze tab and give it a click you'll see a view that looks just like the insert chart view available inside of the insert tab. This time we're gonna go ahead and build just a line graph. So I'm gonna give that a click and click okay. There you go, I've got a chart now. And I have the same flexibility with charts with one exception. You'll notice that I don't have a filter button this time around. Don't worry, we'll find out why that's the case, but it's important to note that you can't filter directly inside the chart using that button. However, as I'm looking at this chart, there's something visually different about this chart that I didn't see in my last style of chart. For example, let's say year. It looks like there's a little drop-down arrow here, almost like a filter drop-down arrow. So in pivot charts, you can actually filter the data using the same classic filter dropdown arrow you use inside of regular tables. So let's go ahead and filter out 2013, for example, and click OK. Just like that, 
our chart changed. Notice we're now only visualizing 2014's trending data. And you might have been focused on this, so you probably didn't notice. But look at our pivot table. Where's 2013? Pivot tables and pivot charts are tight at the hip. Change one, and the other immediately reacts. This is incredibly powerful and really intuitive. You don't have to keep track of whether or not one is matching the other. They will always match. Let's go ahead and clear that filtering out. Simply click on the dropdown once again and select Clear Filter from Year. Now, of course, you have the flexibility to filter by month as well. But in this case here, instead of filtering by month individually, maybe I'd like to use the label filters to find all data that is between a certain field of data. But even that feels like a bit much. Wouldn't it be nice if I could maybe group all of this into quarters? Yeah, that would be great, wouldn't it? Well, as it turns out, you can do exactly that. Go ahead and place your cursor anywhere inside the row labels. Just click on any of the months. Inside the Analyze tab, find the Group Selection button. Grouping is an incredibly powerful tool inside of pivot tables that allows you to link data together into this own cup of information. Now, many businesses like to organize their fiscal year into quarters, so maybe we'd like to also do that. Click and drag to select January through March, and then navigate to the Analyze tab. Find the Group Selection button and give it a click. Once again, ensure that you've got only January, February, and March selected. Instantly, once you group January, February, and March together, every other individual month gets its own group. So let's go through and select April, May, and June. And select Group Selection. Go ahead and do that for the remaining six, July, August, and September. And then highlighting October, November, and December. Lastly, select Group Selection. Now, by grouping these together, we created a whole new field list called Month 2. This is now a detailed view grouping all of these months together. Now, Group 1 through 4 isn't necessarily the most intuitive name. So let's say we'd like to change that. Simply click on group one, and we'll change that to Q1, simply by typing. Go ahead and do that for the remaining values. Simply place your active cell over the group name and start typing. So group three becomes Q3, and group four becomes Q4. How easy was that? Grouping is fantastic, and now, because it's grouped, I can actually collapse these values by using the Expand and Collapse button on the left, or, alternatively, I can pull month out of the rows quadrant completely, because remember, row, because remember, month two is just the grouped value of those months. So let's go ahead and pull month out. Now, we saw that we can deselect month using the checkbox, but you can also click and drag month out. Notice that we've got a little X in the bottom right corner, and release to remove those values. So now we've got a simplified data set and chart, visualizing quarter one, two, three, and four. Not bad. Go ahead and take this opportunity to catch up. At this stage here, what we've done is we've grouped each of the three months into quarters using the group selection tool. So go ahead and take this opportunity to group all of those months together into quarters and then come back.